Okay, so we carry on stripping all those bits down. Now I've got these hubs to strip. We may not be in order on these video clips. Please don't give me any more rhymes. These hubs just have these little locking bars on them to stop your brake disc coming off the hub. So you just knock down. We want to keep these as well. You can buy them. I've seen them made, remade in stainless. But just in case, we shall salvage these and get these plated. There's the other tab, just hiding under the rust. Right. Those ones are done. So next. Can we see the tabs? Yeah, the camera. A boom. A boom. That's one. Two. The board is not straight. It's got melted lead on it from when I was using this board underneath this plywood as a a burning platform for me pan panel salvaging. We've got a little ham uh, bonnet release cable and that's stuck. I'm going to use there we go, a little pin, locking pin on this. This is going to be taken apart because this gets um, zinc plated, put gold pacified for this one. So we're trying to amass a load of parts at the moment. We just, I've just bunched everything together. I'll take you outside and show you because it's all outside today. I'm just trying to get all the little details in the pots. And then the one, one box is for powder coating, mainly in black. And the other pot is for going to the zinc galvanizers. These hubs I like to do them in uh, zinc, they look good. Did that on Ruby. Doesn't affect, funnily enough, the faces of the, uh, the bearings inside. Makes no odds. We might have done. Right, we're going to get our super impact gun and a 13 mil socket. We'll just blast these out and get the bolts and the little locking bars, little locking tabs that join together in two pairs. Get them into the uh, galvanizing box and I'll show you the rest of the bits we're starting to build up with. Raided TC. TC was our mobile store area. And TC's lid is up and all the contents are all over the, uh, the yard as we salvage through and dig out all the bits that we put in there when we stripped Bramble down. If you go right back to episode 1 you'll see me taking it all apart. And around episode 1, 2 and 3 we'll load it all back into, the, into Bramble as a mobile store, storage unit. So now it's time to get everything back out. Nuts, bolts, screws, clips, grommets, all that, all into little trays and boxes. Organise everything. So that we can now start our outsourcing. And again, we'll get the um, other outsourcing parts in here, the chrome bumpers, and get everything start getting together. I've got the gearbox away being built at the moment. I'll show you that. We've got the gearbox mock up on the floor. We'll show you that. Let me just finish this, and I'll take you for a little tour around. Does that get the right socket? Whoops. Fifteens. on this one. Whoops. That's better.
uneven board is most, most annoying. Let me just get the camera first. Oh, that uneven board just do my nut. Not many things that do my nut, but wobbly tables is one of them. <laughs> Not a lot gets to me. People are saying on YouTube, uh, you don't seem to get phased by anything. Well, I don't, but I can tell you one thing. That phases me. <laughs> it's the same in a restaurant. In the night. In the night. That's what I've used to do. Thank you, good night. Now then. We've got those. We've got those, but I just can't quite remember the technique for separating. I should just go. There's nothing older than that. It can only be that it's uh, just rusted on. Thought that had a gone. Not even a sign of fracture in there. I've done this so many times. I don't want to hit that too hard, but we're not even. You can't even see like a fracture there. I don't want to hit it inside it. I'm sure I'm doing this right. Don't forget, we're discarding the discs, so it doesn't matter if we strike the discs. There we go, we're on our way now. See that opening up? for it. I'm going to do a hub nut and everything's going to go wrong. <laughs> now it's just that circle. Nothing wrong there. Could do with taking the bearing out though. I don't want to coat it with the bearing in. Have to be discarded. So clearly, this one should go the same. Could use a bigger hammer. Could use a copper hammer because, in theory, you'd, you shouldn't be damaging this bit. Could open it with a chisel as well, I suppose. Way work best. It's one way you've got to watch your fingers. Oh, wait, I'm going to throw this board in a skip. Whoa, <laughs> wobbly. My sweet. just to stop the thread ends getting damaged. Now, I can even remember how you take out the races. Uh, they do tap out. We need them out. Let's do a hobby. Please. Trying to remember. How do you get them out? Raise the technique. But I can't remember it. I'm going to get that grease off first and investigate. Okay, 
that one taps out, this race taps out from behind, you chisel through and you can tap it out that way. This one, same this side a little bit and you can get that out, that's a seal and the bearing just lifts out there, so keep all them. Not sure what else is inside, I can't quite remember, should know and I don't. I think there isn't anything else. Just the machined faces of the hub. Yeah. Oh, there is a race in there, I think there's a race in there. Yeah, there is. The inner side, side uh, face of that one. Oh my god, it's coming, in it? Face. Race. Help me. Please. Yes, my chisel will go. You just have to feel the lip. Opposite side evenly. Are we shifting? No signs uh, adjuster yet. Move it near the tone and change. Tone changes, races out. That's another one. So that is it stripped, I think. I don't think there's any more. Even if there was, in fact, you could argue that you should leave these in when they're getting galvanised and knock them out after. And that way the gal's not going to go actually in where you need to fit your new race so I think probably better off leaving them in aren't they? I bet someone was on that then, I bet someone was looking at me saying no no you're having these um, gold plated, zinc plated don't take your races out leave them in Dumbo I have got a tool which I use for putting these in it's just a simple piece of bar for the other side, not for that side. Call it hub race insert tool. So in theory, when we get these back, we then knock these out. Does everybody agree or not? Wasted time taking them out, wasn't it? Anyway, that's where we're at with those. Here's our hardware. These are those locking devices. So I'm going to keep all this into the galf pot. I'll just take the, I can leave them races in, then I'll just take that rubber seal out of this one. We'll leave that one as it is. We must remember when we get it back. To knock those old races out, we won't be needing them. So this should pop out. If not, we'll knock it from behind. Knock it from behind anyway. Spin around and that'll be out. Be out now. There she goes. The race is actually on its way. Oh, it's burst through it. Wow. That's pretty sealed in there. See, that's got plenty of room to move. It's only a small um, diameter race compared to the hole that's coming out. Coming out a bit more evenly, bursting its way through it. That is well seized in there. 
Let's have a look at the way they're designed. And that should knock out really. Give it another try. Spin it around it. We are on our way. Going now. Should be it. There we go. Right. The race and everything came out on that one. This won't fit as good. Okay, that's back in. We'll leave that, I think. Right, they're all ready to go, but we must remember when these come back to take their old races out and to knock the new races in. We can use this or a special tool to do it. These I'll keep in a bag for reference. I'm not going to throw them just yet. So now, obviously these need cleaning up. There's a lot of grease in them. So we need to really wash these in some thinners to get rid of that grease. These need a degrease before we talk. We don't want to insult the... Um, Galvanizers, they're very nice people down there. I like to make their life easy. Okay, and to make their life easy, I take everything nice and clean, which is why we're going to be using the parts tumbler soon. We'll be getting that out of the back. So, a collection of parts to try and get as much as we can. So, we only got to do one trip to the, to the galvanizers. Probably end up missing something, but let's give it a go. I'm just trying to get every nut and bolt, every screw, every bracket. I've even got to think about the heater box because there's parts in there which need to be uh, zinc gold passivated as well. Which means we need to strip the heater box down. Or I could get a scrap heater box, which I think I've got, and make an advanced set of parts for that. Because really what I'd like to do with the heater box would be a dedicated video for that. But I'd like to um, do it all in one take. So I'd like to have the metal parts that are inside it advanced replacements if you know what I mean so that's what I'm going to do with the heater box because if I start taking that apart now you want to just do it all in one otherwise it's so fragile we'll talk about that nearer the time let's get these cleaned up we'll see you in a sec finish is a bad idea I'm going to go geyser finish I can't be doing with the fumes no way drive me around a bend Dries is a bit easier on the uh, easier on the mind. Just a brush now to do these, and I'll finish off with a little bit of compressed air. So I'll just get brushing in there. Oh no! What's the rhyme? Air, <laughs> air there. I'm going mental, <laughs> please. The dryer definitely works. It definitely dissolves the grease. See any that was on the side of the bucket just starts to disappear out. There's quite a lot in there, and as I said, I'm doing it so not to insult the plaiters. They don't want this going into their chemicals. They won't want to be doing my work again if I take the mic or bringing them gunked up parts. So we really got to help everybody out, and they'll help you. So. Just letting, I'm getting sort of blobs of it out at a time. We're using a thinner's uh, seam sealing brush is handy for this. Stiff bristles help just to dig it out of the inside of the carrier. There's a big piece there, look. So if you watch, I'll just go once it's in there. Geyser's is not too expensive either. Either, either geyser, energizer. I keep talking in rhyme, I'm going to go mad. And a bit of a sweet. Nearly there with that one. There's some. Let's 
finally worked its way out to the top. There you go, last of it. Last of it. They don't mind rust at the platers, they just don't like paint or grease. Who said to me that they didn't mind rust? I think their machine just eats the rust up. But heavy oils and greases contaminate or take some of the potency out of their chemicals. We're going to blast the rest out with air, don't forget. Cleaning therapy for you. Still quite a bit in. It's amazing how it's holding on. We'll be ready to put a cloth inside in a minute and then rotate it. There we go. These towels are great, you can buy these bulk and uh, they just cut up white towels you can buy them in like a bulk bag They're really great I mean, you can even if you've got to if you don't contaminate them too much you can come back through the washing machine when the wife's out of course I did do that and uh, some of them had oil chemicals and thinners on and ended up contaminating the washing machine so that my uh, work shirt smelt of thinners. Not a good move. The washing machine ho seal started to break down, and uh, I'm sure I put, took a bit off the washing machine. I fixed it all anyway. You've got to be careful to uh, put them in your washing machine if they're absolutely right. That can we can get the rest of that with the air. But there's one more to go. Let's see what we can do. I won't film this for you because it's just going to be exactly the same. What we just done, hook out and dissolve that grease. See you in a sec. Time to get Bramble's axle out of the bushes and get it stripped for powder coat. Come on, Axel, let's get out of here. We'll get this. We need the bits off it for our powder coating mission.
Okay, you saw us taking the bits off the axle there. Now I'm going to show you the um, trailing arms are off the axle. We're going to get the bushes out. I'm going to show you the bush extraction tool. Hold on, we're just going to take it off again. So you can see what we've got. Once a little tap because it's just on its way in. Hold on, I'll knock it back out. I'm just going to knock that back out. Two seconds, I want to show you the, the tool and how we use it. All right, it's a great device. Let's just wind that in. Okay, oops, not that far. Okay, just about there. I'm just going to tap that back out. I'll be right back with you. Hold on, where are we? Okay, Alan Bullen's going to like this one. Hello, Alan, if you're watching. Okay, bush extractor tool. This, you just saw us taking the arms off the axle, hoping you like that. Now, this device takes the bushes out. Most of the times these will work. Make sure you've been oiling up your axle well ahead of this operation. Use plus gas if you can, thanks to uh, Paul for the plus gas. Paul's out there watching, my glasses are broke, we've got Cubond holding my glasses together. These are my work glasses. I never wear my normal nice glasses for this one, but I do sometimes. Okay, and all that rubbish. Bush extracting tool. Okay, we're using it to get out this front bush. These are the arm, trailing arm of the axle, so this is a cavity there for the bush to slide into when it starts its journey outwards. Lock that over the little plate at the end. Screw this inner diameter piece on. Make sure you've got the right one for your type because there are different, there's two different sizes. I'm not sure which end of the sub trailing arm they change the size on. I should know that. Alan, you tell me. But use the appropriate sized end, screw it on, and it's going to find its way just. I mean, you've got millimeters to spare. It really is. It has to line up just right so that you're pulling square. I've done it again. Square spare. The square spare. The poetry. And it'll start to draw it out. Now some of these can be completely fused. And even this, I've seen these strip. I've seen it actually strip. These are high tensile bolts, but I'm sure um, you know that they can possibly strip. Use these washers as well that come with the kit because they help reduce the friction from the bolt head onto this end cap here but what we're going to do as we turn that the screw action will bring in that spacer block at the end and it'll force the bush into the cavity on this side use a, an impact device if you can it's a heck of a lot easier if you use an impact device but you've got to use the proper tool you, a normal nut and bolt may do it but i think you'll find that normal nuts and bolts will strip especially if it's a stubborn bush so we're going to try this now ear defenders on in we go i think a lot of you all have used these before Okay, the bush is out there. It wasn't too bad that one. Now we've just got to get the extractor out. I think we just pulled straight through. I think. Is there enough room to do that? I actually don't know actually how you do that. Uh, extractor is inside there. It's not that tightly in. Uh, ooh, good point, good point. There you go. 
So, in that action we had a success using this tool. And these are Bramble's 40 odd year old stubborn bushes. Very, very handy tool. There it is. Actually looks in good order that bush. Not that we're going to be using it. Not that we're going to be using it, but there it is. So that tool saved me a lot of work. You can chisel, you can air chisel them out, you can burn them out, then air chisel them out. You can hacksaw them out. There's loads of ways. But if possible, do it that way because it's quick and easy. We'll carry on with this tool and do all the arms now. Here we go for the rest of the arms because we're getting powder coating. These arms aren't drilled out for the anti-roll bar. Now, the anti-roll bar came in later on. Early cars didn't have it. They had one at the front on GXLs. But on the rear of GXLs, early ones, there's no holes provided in the bottom arms to connect the mount points for the rear anti-roll bar. So we have to find a roll bar with the measurements, copy them across and drill these before we get these, before we get these powder coated. Anyway, I'm going to tackle this bush at this end now. Here we go for that one. Into there we go. Not too tight, otherwise you'll crush the device. See what type of diameter this one is, because as I say, there is two types. There they are. In fact, could even be three types. I know on facelift cars that you enlarge these to make a more comfy ride. Mine look like this, so I think we're okay. Well, I must admit, these rubbers are now proud. This could be a trickier one. This will be interesting. If you want to stay on live and watch the mistake as it happens, then you can stay with me. Let's just see if we can guide this through. Some plus gas going on again. Not that it's really going to get inside, but it'll help with the thread, the friction on the thread there. Let's just see what happens. Watch your fingers as well. You can trap your fingers, so be very wary of that. Let's Plus gas in at the last minute. Can't do any harm, surely. Let's just do a little tap. We could. Just loosen off. A little bit. And then tap forward. A little bit. Just to give it, in case it's skewed slightly at an angle. quite solidly locked in there. We may have to commit to that. Let's just tap it out. Hold on. Okay, better. Let's recommit. Now we can get more plus gas in. We're looking all right initially now. Stay with us then. Let's carry on with this. Hope you can still, can you still see that? Yes, you're in the middle. Okay, thanks for sticking with me. Patrons and YouTubers, let's get these bushes out. Well. So 
certainly have the bush spinning, but it's actually spinning the entire setup now. We could do with locking the back nut, so it's, it's starting to draw it out, but the entire bush is now rotating with the device at the back. So I've got to think of a way of doing that. It could be that we can now tap it a little bit. I don't want to damage the thread though. There goes the plus gas onto the floor. Let's see what we do. I say it is a bit of trial and error, so you can see the plus is attempting to come out. We have the. I wouldn't think that that would be able to spin. Somehow it's able to spin. Now, I'm trying to think of a way of doing this. Let's try this. Now, it's going to help it a little bit, but it's going to try and draw it in. Still spinning. Uh, let me think. How can we do this, everybody? Let's try this. I need to give it space. I don't really want to mark that because then it won't be as profiled and smooth. So this is spinning round, I don't know why it's doing that. It could be that we could tap it out. That's also got possibilities. loosens it up enough where we think now we can actually tap it out right the way through. So that's not good. In fact what we'll do, we can now take the bush tool, extract tool completely off and grip the remains of the bush in the vise and I bet you we can spin this out. Let's have a try. Stay with me. So actually these are pretty good. They're so good that it's, it's spinning it. Let's take that off. See the exposed part of the bush there more than likely now. We can get this out. And no, we can't. Still don't want to go. Okay, so that way instead. tap this too hard because I'll bend that bolt. Very gently. That's it, that's what we're looking for. A little bit different way of getting it out there. And then just finalise that. that too much because I've damaged the threads so we'll pull that out this way bring this out this side it should go little bit tricky on the side 
waste it's gone. Watch the fingers. Careful with your fingers there. Okay, we're done. That's how it works. Well done. Great little tool. On to the next job. Lost the drill, sorry about that. Okay, so those two arms, the same uh, die was used to get both ends out. For this upper arm, upper swinging arm, we're using the smaller die piece. Plus gas on, plenty on. And let's see how these top ones go. So that's the smaller item, so that covers. This kit is obviously for a pre-facelift car. Okay, so you'll probably get different ones, different sizes on your swinging arm kit that you've got sorry not your kit but your swinging arm um, set up your age of your, the arms on your car later ones use bigger bushes I think for better road insulation they were always trying to improve the ride so I think they made these these ones at the front here bigger and deep probably the back as well gave a softer ride okay we're gonna get these out let's try it okay so we'll start I'll start by lining the tool up, making sure it's square. There's a little inspection hole there. You can just get that outer cup in the right place. Plenty of plus gas, as I said. And I'm on a, a 19 impact gun. Lock on, let's see what happens. Tighten up on the vise. These ones proving more stubborn. Let's have a little inspection, just see. Thought these might be worse, they look a lot more rusted. The biggest trick is really gripping it without damaging the arm itself. Getting a vice mark in the arm is what we're trying not to do. doesn't like it there, I'm trying to think of a better way to go, use your head, oh no, because you can't get a ratchet in, that's why, let's go from the top there, just trying to get a place where this won't damage, that's not too bad, you can only just see it, Going to bring you back into sight now. I'm packing that out really. There we go. Packed it out a little bit with a bolt. Just a little packing space in there. Really do much that. You see all right, it's a bit noisy, a bit shaky.
A lot of heat being generated. Yeah, brings a bit of, bit of heat into the equation. Out it goes again, so yeah, it works. Just got to take your time, just take it easy, don't overstress anything. Keep that drill having a little rest so you burn the... It's not a drill, it's an impact wrench, but they call it a drill, it's an impact wrench. Okay, we're looking good. One more to go, and then we're out of it on these bushes. I'm glad to see the back of them. Okay, using an original lower trailing arm, swinging arm, axle arm as a template. I'm now drilling the holes in Bramble's arms to take the anti roll bar rear. Woo! Should have the clutch on for that, really. Stick the clutch on. Spin your arm around the way. So we're through there, 10 mils all the way through. So these are now ready for the powder coaters. Bushes out. Good arms, good quality arms, not heavily pitted, not bad to be fair. Surprised how, how good they are. I've seen a lot worse pitted arms than those ones off Bramble. So good there. Top one's already in the box. So we're ready. Put that back into stores, our reference template for the roll bar rear. Have a quick back up here, put the uh, bush extractor away. SP tool, that one's some psych pick events for that SP. If you're looking for one, get a good quality one. So an SP, Sykes pick events tool, renowned tools, very good. Right, I'm going to carry on. Now we're going to do the seat bases. We've got to take the seat front seat bases to pieces because some of those are powder coated. The rails themselves don't get powder coated. Do not powder coat your rails because they've got little ball bearing carriers and, and plastic ball bearing carriages which form the, the runners of the rails. If, like me, you make the mistake and powder coat them, it's bye bye seat rail. So you can't do it. All you've got to do is wire brush and satin black them. That's all you can do. Um, I wouldn't advise taking the seat rail apart because they're punched and pressed in position, the little carriages that do your seat sliders. They're actually stamped in. You can knock the stamps out, it can be done. It's a major job, and I wouldn't say it's, it's really worth the effort. So take all your seat parts apart from. See parts apart, oh, the runners themselves. Okay, on to something else. Okay, now stripping down seat bases. These are the twin height adjusting seat bases. So you can see just at the front, right in the middle of your screen there, is the receptacle for the height adjuster, which we've just stripped down. Height adjusters just, oh my God, height adjusters just here. Help us. Okay, that. Is a snail cam which slots 
and engages into the front of that receptacle you pull the bar, little locking pin selects different height options strip down ready for powder coating into the powder coating box we go and we need to get these rails into the powder coating box with the twin height adjuster it's a his and hers so you get them on both sides drivers and passengers this is an actual bed lever seat base as well which was only on the early ones you get a separate lever just at the side there it is that bed lever sort of gives you another third travel forward you've normally got your adjuster lever on the actual there's some rails that slot inside here they're off we can't powder coat those because it damages them there's a lever on those rails which takes the front sorry takes the seat to the front we're going to leave the lever okay but we use the base here because that's got no ball bearings or anything to get damaged no plastic parts we strip it down and this gives you an extra amount of forward and the idea is that you would um, to create a bed in the car you push the seats forward then pull this lever and push them even more forward so they're virtually under the dashboard then you put your backrest right down and it goes flush with the back seat which makes a completely level interior to your car other than the center console of course you're able to recline right back so that is what a bed lever is now the frame itself can do this take out them plastic bump stops take out these liners here these engagement liners we've got a frame we can leave that pin in there's no problem powder coating with the pin in place and um, we can just do that shot blast that get that powder coated so that's another one for the bin the powder coating bin that is okay actually using that white background makes your focus the uh, exposure level change it's tricky I use the white background so it would be a bit clearer for you but actually underexposes it levers bed lever double extended is right out underneath the dash seat backrest can go all the way down only on very early cars strip it and get it blasted then get it powder coated Wow, it's a jamboree of bits out here. Seat frames stripped down. Galvanising parts. And look at this top full of goodies. Chocker full there. Now we're going to do, we're sending the clip off to be coated. But first, we've got to make a little mark because it has a Mark V power steering. So we make a mark for the Mark V. A little bit of yellow paint on there because the power steering rack needs an index tab like a hole so we just got to put a hole in there and we need to just scallop out a little bit of metal on the rib of the clip just so that it clears this tube section there that's about all you got to do other than that the bad boy fits on let's have a look so power steering mark 5 into a mark 3 cradle a little scallop out there you can see wait a minute here so a little bit more to do get that hole drilled in there and that completes the suspension clip so we can send it away to get powder coated we wouldn't want to be drilling that hole later on so may as well do it now working outside because it's been nice weather you can see that my clips bolted down to my clip dolly so I can take it anywhere I want but uh, it's just nice weather very hot and sticky actually a little bit more to grind off there and that hole to drill let's get that in
Okay, with a clip stripped and out of the way, to turn our attention now to some final powder coating items and some chrome items and some galv items. So we're looking for powder coating, chrome in, chrome plating, and zinc gold passivate. So start a motor, accelerate a bracket, accelerate a pedal. We need to make sure we box all the little clips for that into one place. And then the steering column itself, that's going to be powder coated. We've got to take that to pieces, so we'll start stripping the steering column now. Some tabs to bend out on here so we can get to these bottom uh, bushes, plastic bushes. There's some one-way sliding mount clips here. I'll show you those. These are for, for crash. They're designed to slide out of an impact so that the steering wheel isn't fixed rigid. So these actually tap out. Unfortunately with these, once you tap them out, you normally can't get them back in. There's some little plastic liners. I've covered this in the Project Ruby video. And they break when you slide them out. I think they're a one-way affair. You can tiger seal these back in. It'll have the same effect. Then there's some one-way bolts, some what they call snap bolts on the steering column bracket. We have to chisel those round to undo them because they would normally have had a little head on them. You tighten up and then the torque snaps the head off so you can't uh, steal the car by just going under the cowl and unwinding the bolts, taking the steering lock off. It's a, a theft device. Then you've got some rivets there which hold the stalk mounting screw plate bracket on. We'll be able to get the shaft out the collapsible shaft will come out. That doesn't get coated, that's left as it is. It's just the casing that we want, the telescopic casing. You'll see that it's ribbed so that it can collapse on itself. And inside, the shaft, as opposed to being one solid steering column, slides in telescopically. So the idea is the impact comes from this area. You're coming from that area, so this can slide and separate away. And then the column collapses on itself. Uh, some clips to do on the windscreen motor. We'll flip these off, we're going to galv them. The casing gets coated as well. And as I said, the accelerator bracket just needs stripping down. A few little choice little rare clips like the accelerator holding clip. Very hard to get hold of if you lose those. Some little split pins. We'll leave them all as a little kit. They won't get coated, they'll be put in a plastic bag and locked away safely. Same with a little fixing kit down at the bottom for the accelerator pedal itself. Shaft itself, I, I chrome plate these. You can zinc them if you want, I like them in chrome. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll get the camera on the tripod, set some tools, see what we need. Let's get down and strip these so we can put them in our goodie box because that powder coating goodie box is really beginning to fill up now. Okay, let's see what we can do. Okay, we have stripped the accelerator pedal out. Quite easy to do. You just, I haven't filmed that bit, but there's a spring which gives you the springy bit of the pedal. Pedal is just, let's just tip them off. It's just held in by the pressure of that plastic. So you just put a little pry bar between it like this, and it'll come out, your spring will come off. That's that pedal released, the actual pedal itself. This end held into the bracket with these um, combination of split pins and uh, these twist lock release. You just undo those and it'll, you'll work it out. It's quite easy to do. So we've got a bit of hardware coming off now which we need to look after. This is all specialist stuff. Hard to find so I'm going to seal that away in another box. So that's that bracket. I've got this casing off the wiper motor. I'm only going to shot blast that because I'm going to use two pack black because it's uh, you can't powder coat that because there's magnets inside it. But that's part of our wiper refurb. So plenty of little bits and bobs we've got now to get these rivets off here so we can release this and we've got some circlips to get out in, inside it as well. So if I just put on the uh, put on the crocky I'm going to take the tops take the tops off the rivets. The funny rivets those, they've got little stalks in them, I think the steel ones. We'll take the tops off them. 
alter that angle you can see we're coming down. reason I took them off is because there's a little bit of stud just sticking out of it so let's get this in I have got some really good drill bits these ones aren't the best ones so why are these yeah this rivet it's got a steel pin inside it as opposed to the as opposed to the normal alumin, aluminium one there like that you've now got to tap them through so we just need to get our centre punch and tap them hopefully they tap through I seem to remember them doing that I'll grab over the centre punch just over here got a combination of punches to use touch the shaft you find that they'll touch the shaft of the actual case we may have to take the shaft out in order to extract the rivets if I seem to remember it being that way round actually remove this shaft now you've got circlips at the end just come in and get these let's get your lights on If a cable can get caught, it'll get caught. Unbelievable. You couldn't, if you went fishing, you couldn't catch that much stuff. Unbelievable. Woo! Right. Yeah, I was just moving the lamp and then the, the uh, cable wrapped around my legs. I'm only doing it so you can see. So we're taking this to bits, just so we can powder coat the the uh, outside of it. Oh, that doesn't pick up on the radio. Sparks. How good is YouTube? I don't know. I need a pick now. Should have the pick. Yes, I had the pick ready. Nearly out. Let's get finishing with the pick. What's that? So, first uh, clip. And then there's a washer inside. Again, the pick is good for hooking it out. So there we go. So we're off with that. Oops, not off. So it goes, I put them in order on the floor that they came out in. I don't think that gives us anything just yet. And then you then go to your second pin. 
second um, circlet, which is, I think you've got to open that one up, it's the opposite. So now I've got to go and get my opening circlet pliers, and that's what holds the shaft on, just there. That one, the first one we did was like a, was the seal, there's a bearing seal there. So now I'll go and get my other uh, circlets, which squeeze outwards, and that shaft will drop out, then I think you can get this, the rivets are sort of stuck on that. I'll pause you and I'll go and get that. Okay, circuit players. More common wise on Radio 4 Extra, no adverts, no music, so it means I can leave something on and not get bored. Because I have to keep going back to the radio to um, turn it off when I'm recording because of the songs. Right, that's that one out. Put them in order that we took them off. Release that now, so let's have a look what we got next. Steering lock is now preventing us from moving the shaft, so we're going to have to get these two snap bolts out. It's not too bad to do that, you can kind of like chisel them round. We'll have a go. The value on probably won't get it uh, with the screwdriver I'm going to use now. I'm going to use a disposable screwdriver be a proper tool for this but it might work and you see that there you're just up the overhead let's try it dig in first that's gone so tap that out sometimes it goes dead easy you still can't quite get it because it's not got a slot in it to, you know, undo it. Obviously, it's safe. It's a anti theft Just use this screwdriver. It doesn't matter if it gets damaged. Okay. Strike these round. That one's gone. So you can a little tip, move the bracket a little bit, because you'll find it's the bracket that's making it stick, not the actual thread of the bolt. There is no real super duper way. Something that can dig in it. Even these circuit pliers have got more chance of getting it than the screwdriver. Anything that's sharp really will hook into that. And then once it gets proud, you're all right. A little helping hand. With the screw it. It's hard work getting in a radio station that you can actually tolerate. Not that I necessarily tolerate this. It's almost proud. We can get that now. So snap bolts then, really cool. Your steering lock. Okay. That one. All to get the powder coating. 
this is. It's got to be done anyway because we clean it all up. Right, that's one section of it. The lock will come off the other side of the light tap. Both. Okay, steering lock off. And now we should find a bit of movement going on with this. We should find that it'll tap out because there's nothing else holding it in. Just trying to remember, I have done this before. There is a technique. This won't go yet until then rivets are clear and the rivets are nowhere near clear. If I remember rightly those rivets, is there any more? Perhaps there's another another uh, circlip underneath this rubber seal, can't remember. Okay, yes you definitely need the rivets completely out. Otherwise, the end of the rivet inside is stuck on this side. So as I'm trying to slide the shaft upwards, the rivet's hitting there. So we have to knock them completely out. And there they are. Then, then this then withdraws. This is your telescopic shaft. That'll come out like so. You can see how... It would slide in and out on there. That's a set length, so you need to mark where it is. Which I've done down there. I'm going to mark here. Make sure that your spec for that is in the book, so you can move it and knock it into place where you want. Okay, so that's the steering shaft. We we'll put all these parts back on it now because we're not doing any more with that just yet. This is what we wanted. This for the powder coating. There's a little bulkhead seal at the end. We'll tap that off knock these out now fortunately as i say you normally can't reuse these once they slide out that way because these little white wafer clips seem to break but i've t i've um, tiger sealed these back on on the other cars i've done and it effectively does the same thing they're just to stop it wobbling but also to let it break away which tiger seal would do okay right i've put all these parts away now because we're winding up for this evening but we've got a nice stash of powder coating bits starting to build up okay put all this stuff away now that uh, will continue to slide off there if we wanted it to leaving another circlip just behind it which we'll leave on so there you go it's all taken apart really i think that does come off it's just a little bit resistance at the end okay we're going to leave it for tonight I'll bag all these parts up now then, a quick vac up and we're done. So steering column disassembly, a couple of parts, I'll just go through it again, what you've got, that bottom uh, seal, like a bushing, plastic bushing, then you've got your actual bulkhead seal, so that plastic bushing is sitting in the end. There's a little piece to take out here now, a little grey plastic, another bushing which is just held in with some tabs that are bent over, so we need to get that out of ice, that'll be melting. Then these to slide out, and then that's the case in done. Here's the clips. Oh, that one's come off. That one survived the first. That one survived. Looks like we might be in with these ones. Yeah. Looks like we've saved them. Well, that's, they usually just crack. Looks like we got ourselves a full set. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I take it back. I've got a full, full kit of all our parts for the for the steering column breakaway department okay good right just the, the bushing to get out the end then bend them tabs up and we're off okay it's time for bumpers we've got to get these sent away to s and t chrome they're the best or the best i've used so far we also pinched a few little heater box bits I'll cover that later but this is a scrap heater box so I'm getting myself an advanced set of bracket kit uh, bracket brackets and fitting kits this accelerator pedal belongs to the chrome section so again it's just lots of shuffling around and then when all this stuff is done we'll have a great time assembling all the shiny bits so this is the the necessaries you've got to do it so Let's have a look what we got for bumpers then. Down we go. Brambles bumper. 
Okay, let's have a look at it. Rear brambles, rear bumper, pretty much gone. The right off. Beyond economical, beyond economical repair, it could be fixed. It was the last bumper in the world. You'd be having a go at it. You put in metal in. You'd use the shape as a guide, and you'd probably end up sort of hand crafting an entire bumper. Actually, get away with the middle bit. You probably, if you if you really had to, you'd put a whole new piece of steel in there, using that as your guide, and you'd end up sort of rebuilding something. We're not going to do it, of course. It's not worth it. Bumpers are pretty readily available, pretty ready, readily available. So we won't be using this, but what we will need off it is the bumper rubbers. This one's salvageable, so that's can come off because they're hard work to get. I don't know about this one, I think this one's damaged, if I recall, yes it is. So, one bumper rubber salvaged, rear bumper under rider gone, but bumper iron looks okay. Most times these now, these bolts here, will just spin out, but we'll try, we need to recover that. I found one in stores if I needed one as well, so we've got some irons if we need them. That's the rear bumper. Then. Here is a donor rear bumper which will get the chrome boys to do. Damaged corner on it and a missing one on the other end, but a pretty straight bumper and ST can fix that up. The inners, the mounting inners haven't detached away, so the degree of rot hasn't really got going on this one, which means this it's our bramble bumper, we just need to get the iron off it and clean up the whole clips where the old bumper rubber strips would connect. And then, for the front bumper then, we've got Bramble's original front bumper, would you believe it, that this Les Bramble had a new bumper when it had that accident. But it seems very, very suspiciously good condition considering the rest of the car. But it is from Bramble. I've written RB on it. When I was stripping Bramble, I was calling the bits off Ruby, but they weren't. They were all Bramble bits. I just got my names mixed up. Right, so what we need to do with this is get the socket out, try and spin out some of these bolts. I think a lot of them won't come off. These ones. For the rubber itself, looking at the rubber, even the rubber has survived. So we're never going to save the nuts and bolts off the rubber. You just have to undo them till they snap or grind them off. It takes quite a while to do that, grinding each one of them off with the crock sander and stripping the hardware. The bumper irons look good, so we can get them in the powder coating tub. So a few little things. Rear bumper irons for the powder coating tub. Front bumper irons, they need to go because powder coating's first. Then clean up the bumper by removing all the nuts and bolts off it, getting it stripped to its bare minimum, packing it up and getting it wrapped and ready to be sent off to ST along with any underriders if we need them. But we look like we're okay for underriders, courtesy of the newt. We are in stock with. At least Jim's got us the front set. I don't know if he got me the rear ones. Answers on a postcard, a little news. We're okay there with those. We've got our underriders. Um, we could, once these are stripped, I mean, really, we need to be building up the mount holes for the. Um, underriders before the paint I don't want to be drilling the holes for the underriders before the paint so we need to be careful here although we could use some scrap I have got actually another pair of bumpers which you could use for alignment purposes we basically what I'm saying is we need to get the holes made in this valance at the front and the valance at the back so that it's all painted in I don't want to be drilling them afterwards because these mount through your lower valances on them bolts there we need to get them aligned properly and looking very straight on the car but 
Still got to strip these down anyway. I think I'd like to get these in at the chrome place. I really would. It could well be that the S&T get these back before the shell's ready to go away from paint. If not, I'm sure that by before the paint actually goes on, I could always fit them at the body shop. It's not a big deal as long as we're aware of it. Time now, socket set and get these stripped. Bumpers then to be sent away and ironwork to be powder coated. Okay, finally finished stripping down all the bits we need for zinc. I think. <laughs> Gearbox is in everybody. Just needs its little ancillaries uh, zinc plating. So we've got copies of all those ancillary clips and brackets and stuff like that and they're off to get zinc plated. Zinc gold passivate. In the meantime the gearbox comes built. So that's all completely fully built with the correct Pinto bell housing on. A twin output tail cone, so you've got uh, speedo and electronic um, speed sensor, transducer, whatever you want to call it. So that gearbox is in stock and ready. These parts are ready to go and get gal. We've got a bucket outside, chock full now. There you go. Full. Cradle there. So that bucket's full. A couple more clips and pipes to go in. Here, these are off the gearbox, so we can get like all the little tubes. We're ready now to start tumbling, so we want to get the tumbler out. Uh, it's at the other store, so we've got to go down and bring it. But we've got to put we've put an order in with Frost for loads of little bits and bobs, some degreasing solution, some uh, de-rusting solution rather, uh, some media for the tumble blaster, uh, woo, parts tumbler and media, and Frost are going to kindly drop it off. And bring us a few goodies as well because they're just going to help us out a little bit so um, we're waiting for them to arrive now should be good they're going to bring down those bits they just happen to be close by so when they get a nice visit from the boys from frost now hopefully they'll bring the catalog my frost catalog should be around somewhere i'm supposed to have it handy all the time I've got Tang, it's around here somewhere, it's an extensive catalogue, there's a lot to look through but I've had a quick pick through and got some of the stuff that I need just waiting now for the, the boys to arrive talking of the rest of the equipment, we want to be getting that axle in here as well and get that shot blasted down because again, speaking of the frost products, we use the uh, chassis black gloss on the axle because we don't like stripping them See, what I'll do is I'll run that axle, I'll, I'll blast it back, and then I'll um, paint it with the, uh, the chassis black paint, and then we'll see if it's a noisy one, then it gets stripped, because it could be really good, and you've wasted your money. The thing about axles is, it is hit and miss. I've had them rebuilt, and they've still been bad. So, for that reason, because I've had such a mixed sort of uh, results with axles, I mean, the only decent build I had was Fostec and that was a really good rebuild but Fostec can't trade in now so I'm going to paint the axle up and then we're going to run it it's not hard it's an afternoon's job to take it off okay let's wait for the uh, the components to arrive okay we're rolling now as promised Stuart and Steve from Frost have rolled into town yeah. unpacking the goodies yeah loads of stuff yes oh, dum 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 that's all, that's the stuff that goes under your wings i was telling you about really it was there it is it looks like licorice good stuff for putting under your wings on the on the, uh, on the front wings and we've got this the, the chassis black in there we've got the the triangles for that and the tumbler that's it these, these are a commodity you can actually trade these like you can uh, bitcoin yeah each one of them <laughs> we've got the we've got the cuddly toy. Didn't you do well? Didn't they do well? Cuddly hey. toy. Very good. Yeah, and, and the Evaporus. I'm looking forward to trying out this Evaporus. So we thank Frost for turning up, Steve and Stu. Pleasure. Thank you very much, okay. boys. Let's get right into the action then. Never mind. Let's get these dipped. Okay. So we thank Frost for uh, good tidings, and we now try out the Evaporus. So into the buckets we go. Just gonna leave that for 12 hours and we'll see what results we get. Mixed bags of bolts and nuts. Everything that we, you saw me just preparing it on earlier clips. Just get a couple more buckets now. I'm just gonna keep it shallow. A couple more containers to pop these in. 
we don't want to overload so I'll swap some of them from there into there some parts are worse than others this just helps pre-tumbling so it'll just give us every little edge we can get and we'll go for so sort of even that out so we've got sort of multiple arrangements and then we're going to a slightly bigger container to get those bigger bolts and some of the larger components here so we'll now go and hunt down just doing it in smaller tubs just so I can keep my eye on things really could have it all in one great big tub but uh, we'll do it this way so we've upper rust then and then of course as we showed you just then we've got the uh, the triangles what they call it it's the media for the tumbler this is the ceramic the ceramic media and then some this will be getting used for the power steering pump the brake servo and a few other things that in conjunction with the that's the primer for the chassis black, we'll be using the chassis black. I'm going to plug that a lot because it's a good, good bit of kit. The ops board is back. Ruby's old ops board, look. Project Ruby. We've re we've refitted it in a secret area. We are in the R and D building at the moment. You don't want to see it. The R and D building is rough. We're going to make it nice. I've started ripping out because we've, we've run out of room. So this is all my junk, and I've already done four. Mondeo Estate with to the tip, mainly of old paint tins that were no good anymore. And I'm being ruthless and going through stuff. So I've got well, half my old jukebox spares from years ago as an engineer. And then just an assortment and jamboree and junk. But within it are some gems. So we've got to go through all this stuff. As a bit of this is meant to be relaxation. <laughs> this is my idea of relaxation. Ruby's dashboard, oh, oh come on, let's go have a look. Bits of old seats, bumpers, Ruby's dash, paints, there's all sorts. Grills hiding up in the roof. You are in black ops, you are in black ops. These for when we break down. And there's the ops board. So, I'm clearing all this junk out. It feels good when you have a good clear out of, of what 20 years worth of stuff here that's accumulated so it's time and breaks my heart to do it but it's got to go and a new plan will be drawn up on this board I just hope it's going to be easy to wipe, <laughs> wipe off last night we left setting out Parts in the vapor rust, and it's been an overnight stay. Whoops! It's been an overnight stay for the parts in the rust we trust. Let's delve in. Let's delve in. That's looking clean. Whoa! Nice. That was the that's the height adjusting locking pin. That was really rusty. Whoa! Okay, heater box securing bracket. So, looks like it's good stuff. That's just an overnight stay. That one was really bad. I expected it to be. That's pitting. So, you could cook that one a little bit more, perhaps. Let's have a look at a bolt. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Now, that's really going to help us. I mean, you could argue that doesn't need to go in the tumbler now. It's that clean, it's ready straight for the galvanizers, the zinc gold passivates. I'm really liking it. Yep, yeah, that's the little securing rod for the heater internal flap on the heater box. Lovely. That's want to keep on delving. It's like one of them lucky dips at the fairground. The sawdust, I want to 
and one of Whiz Wheels uh, kit. A little hot rod Whiz Wheels in one of them in 1977 at Greaves Hall Summer Fate. A spare wheel locking bolt that wants to tumble a little bit. Yeah, but uh, these these are coming up good. Look at that. I mean, give them a little wipe down, even better. How exciting! Yeah, I mean this kind of stuff's fun. It's like playing with toys. When we're welding, that was hard graft. This is the fun part, like Gary says. So what's in the pot? Says there's out in there in my that here there's my pot. That's his pot. Says there's anything in my pot for your pot. Don't threaten me with a dead fish. Wow. Wow. I know where you are, you crow crag. I've seen you, especially you, dancing around like a beep. Lovely. You could just keep, just keep on. Oh, I just want to keep delving in. <laughs> Earth strap. More bolts. This is a just. It's just. It's just great. And this stuff's not dangerous. Let's have a look at the specs on it. Because people might write in and say, oh, you can get brick acid to do that, and um, other types of acid, vinegar and things. Yeah, I think you can, but this, okay, an amazing rust eliminator, product with extensive research, power effective, remove even deep rust on all types of mild steel and iron, safe on surfaces, won't harm copper, brass or alley, plastic, rubber or vinyl, non-toxic, biodegradable, no acids or alkalis, non-flammable contains no petroleum, petroleum solvents. So it's better than using your rust, uh, your acid that you can buy, brick acid and stuff like that, because it's not dangerous to use. You can wash down, you can rinse away and discard it. Well, this is reusable. We're going to be pouring it back into the tub. It's just a safe, clean way of de-rusting your, your bolts. And price-wise, you'd have to look on the site on frost site for this I, I'm thought I'm really sorry I can't give you the price of that container that five litre container don't think it's that much you know so loads of stuff what I'll do rather than just keep filming this because I'm so excited that Friday feeling I'm just gonna decant everything out of here got the gloves on of course and a, a towel just to mop up we're trying to save the liquid as much as we can Okay, so I'll just carry on decanting that. And, okay, we'll put them in the tumbler anyway and just clean up even more. So I'll bring the tumbler down from stores and we'll get the the uh, the media there, the uh, abrasive little triangles, the ceramics, and load the tumbler up. So we'll have a little tumbler afternoon. Let's go and hypnotise ourselves in the tumbler. Let's have a quick refresh of the shell. We've neglected it, haven't we? Nothing changes then on the shell. Still there. Where else is it going to go? Not the paint shop till September. Gearbox waits in the wings. Some of the parts on the gearbox I'll now start to, to do. Look at this kick down relay solenoid. That wants its bracket and housing nicely plating. The gearbox boys, I couldn't expect them to start detailing all little bits on the box. Especially the, the price they did. Good price. Automatic transmissions of Preston Grant is your man if you want your auto gearbox building. Talk to Grant at uh, Automatic Transmissions, Emmanuel Street, Preston. If you're northwest based and you're looking for a reliable gearbox guy, I love the way they do stuff down there. If you look in Project Ruby's video, you'll see it. we do a visit to the, the gearbox shop and we, we meet Grant. It's great when you build up these contacts, you know, and that's what it's all about. You can get yourself a nice little network of reliable contacts. It makes your next restoration that little bit easier because you just, as long as everyone's still trading and not retired out of the business, you've got yourself a, a black book full of little handy contacts. Plus the contacts that you meet on YouTube. Can't thank you enough for the advice on Patreon and YouTube. When you send me little snippets, even if they're just humorous little clips, appreciate every comment that you do. I mean that. A lot of time people send me in advice, little snippets of advice, and I do hope I get back to every one of you if I can. Sometimes I might miss the odd one. Don't get offended, please. If I do miss the odd one, I will catch you. 
okay so shell not changed just waiting in the wings we're going to do a bit more body filling on the quarter wing at the back we're going to get the botmeister in richard the filler monster he's the best he's going to help us get that quarter looking good and then we'll start on the gapping but i want to get all this stuff away away and away so here we go right i'll carry on decanting it's a bramble ramble Okay, all liquid out. And then just a quick random dig for you. You'll not get paint off. That's where the tumbler comes in. Let's have a look, for example, at this windscreen wiper spindle mount bolt. There's Bramble's orange paint there. It's had a good go. You can see how nice and clean that was. That was pretty rusty. But where the paint is on that's where it can't get to and that's where the tumbler will come in and some washers very heavily pitted washers you can see that it's having a go and you could perhaps leave these in longer let's just put this down on the towel stick into my gloves there don't let the gloves quite on if you ever put these gloves on when your hands are still wet they just don't go on right so that needs more work obviously some of this stuff was heavy you could always hand filter back through then give them a second go but that's like breaking off I think the tumbler will finish that what we've done is broke the back of it um, a lot of the stuff though is really great as it is remember how rusty they were the castle nut there looking nice so a thumbs up for that one it's time to tumble let's go and get it all loaded up with the powder coated items found some tank straps we needed them just had to get the bolts off jack's in there i've made a note of the, the jack date code so we know to re-stencil that in other than that i think everything's done we make sure we tell them not to powder coat the stubs here these are going to be in black clip in cradle roll bars everything so i'm going to take these and drop these off now mondeo trip then for powder coating items should be all of them if we find there's any more i always make another trip it's not that far great okay the media going in tumble's arrived so we don't know how much we're going to need probably all all them bags Use it. One kilogram bags, can I do it? I can't do it. Well, this took these in. Hang on. I've got four kilograms in, in there. Now it's time. I'm going to be switching on any minute now. Oh, we'll bring over. You ready to be hypnotized? Are you ready to be hypnotized? to be hypnotized I can't wait so we just fire it up and then start feeding the things in let's do it
comes from the cockpit. <laughs> he has a face on him like thunder. Bloody <laughs> <laughs> <Funny> old cows. <laughs> Good, isn't it? Yeah. This is a telling boat. Here's the boss. Uh, that's possibly mine. Yes, it is. Yeah, I shouldn't be driving after ten pints. Ten pints, not you. Nine pints, it was all right. But look at him now. He's absolutely knackered. You know. <laughs> it's the fumes. <laughs> Nonsense. The fumes. The fumes. The fumes. <laughs> Blames it on the fumes. Too many pints. Ah, uh, oh uh, Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Get. <laughs> no, so no, 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 no. Give me better. <laughs> what about the wheels, boy? So we going rust style. What about the bloody wheels? Oh, what about I'm going rust style? Deep dish rust style. So you reckon? Deep dish. Are they Mexican? Are they Mexican? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I don't like them at all. I do not like them at all. Yeah, well, you need back to Chrome. Yeah, yeah. Set the old uh, Russian uh, drill. Back to Chrome. Oh, quick coating primer. I'll sell everything. Time back to silver. black. Sell everything. Buy, sell, sell, Time buy, sell. Cortina exhausts are a pain in the arse just yeah. to get right. Turn the time's upside down, but then it's quite down here. Go, go, go! <laughs> hey, it's putting the kick down in. Oh, it's well now. It's good. Bye, Chingo. Bye, Johnny. Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. Uh, a fleetness of foot. Uh, uh, uh. Grace, pace, and space, Uncle. Uh, There's grace, pace, and space. I need a wide angle lens to get everyone in. Stuff. I can see it, Peter. I can see it. Uh, damn these cameras and I'll go in their first. witchcraft. Cover you. Oh, I'll throw uh, some fire. Fucking uh, <laughs> hell. No level. No level over every lake and reservoir in England. I don't know. I suppose you're wondering what we're going to do. I can't tell because I don't know myself. <laughs> All I know is it's going to have to be done at low level. <laughs> Under radar. New level, sir. Attack on my blue marker. Attack on my blue marker. Oh, look, another place Attack on the green marker. Attack on the blue marker. Angels 1 5. We have some trade for you there. 100 plus. Coming in off the west coast. 100 plus bandits. Great, great diving it, now. Simon, where the bloody hell are you, Simon? Cam. Where the bloody hell are you? Over the shoulder view. Where the hell are you, Simon? It's like shooting fish in a barrel, sir. Stop that Polish chit chat and set your heading for 109. North of Stundy, North of Stop that Polish chit chat. Oh, your best Polish accent, that was very good. North of well done, Pavel. Blue section, blue section, report in, blue section. We're taking heavy hits, I can't take it anymore. Oh, you should get my arse off here. You're pretty mouth, ain't you? You're the pretty Cornish one. Now, why are you going to run the gun by arms? I'll give you the key. Right. What do you mean? Come on, let's get together in perfect harmony. Oh, yeah. so I got 28. There you go, 43. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a break. I'll give you the key. No, you're not with the key. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Simon. 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 Come on,
Swing's paradise. Yeah, yeah it's all, there'll be all sorts of that, yeah. Uncle. All, it's all going on over there. Oh, my God, it doesn't so, really end. Uh, uh, <laughs> there'll be lubricating gel and all sorts. What are they all focused? <laughs> Well, really? Really? they've got to, got to keep it all lubricated. Uh, did you hear that line? The lubricating gel for the old fogies. I hey, thought that would be you? something like bio oil. <laughs> Isn't that more modern? <laughs> for the younger generation. Wrinkly skin. <laughs> baby bio. Ah, uh, the baby bio. Uh, help the hair grow. Uh, <laughs> baby bio. Nice and smooth now. Smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> Smooth as a cashmere cod piece. And you can. Oh, yeah. Who's had a ca cashmere cod piece for fuck's sake? Nobody's had a cashmere cod piece. Have you had a cashmere cod piece, Pete? Cameo had one, the red one. Yeah, I did, yeah. I know it's was cashmere. I know it's cashmere. Oh, 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 the Bob Reeves thing on Bob's big, big nice hat when he's doing the parody of the song. Fucking hell, look at that Ferrari! Oh my shite! Oh my stars! <laughs> Someone stars!